you very much, uh, Dr. Azid. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, Center for Bioethics and Medical Humanities that have invited me to join this such a valuable meeting. And I also want to congratulate it as well for stunning accomplishment uh, because it's already been granted uh, status as uh, UNESCO chair. So congratulations from the leadership uh, from Professor Sunarto, Professor Yati, Professor Rika, and all the team at the Center for Bioethics and Medical Humanities, as well as all partner, local, national, and international partners. Uh, because this is less than 10 minutes, uh, I have three slides. Uh, would you allow me to present uh, using those three slides? So as uh, presenting by Dr. Wika so clearly that uh, within the UNESCO chairs project, uh, there are four focus, uh, and I will not uh, repeat again, but uh, to support uh, those kind of uh, focus or aims uh, during uh, the next uh, four years. I would like to uh, try to recall and reflect uh, the uh, very rich and long-standing contribution from Center of Bioethics and Medical Humanities uh, given to the faculty as well as to university and also uh, to wider communities. Obviously, it's really challenging for me to put all the rich and long-standing contribution within one slide, and it's impossible. So I just try to highlight uh, the scope of the uh, rich and long-standing contribution. The first is uh, the contribution from the center to our undergraduate program. So uh, during our previous curriculum, the people and the staff from the Center of Bioethics and Medical Humanities work so hard uh, to develop uh, bioethic topic inserted into our curriculum. And currently, until now, it's already went through three types of uh, curriculum development for bioethics. The first, uh, when our curriculum have a special, special block for bioethics, and then the current curriculum that still exists until now, that we still use until now, uh, the bioethic uh, content inserted within the block uh, of our curriculum. And then for the next curriculum, the new curriculum, we are currently under developing new curriculum, uh, bioethic content will be as a longitudinal uh, content. The Center for Bioethics and Medical Humanities also contribute to develop elective block. It's not mandatory, a uh, student can take it or not. And at least we have several elective block from uh, CBMH, like Human Enhancement Technology, Green Healthcare Challenge, Stories in Medicine, Digital Aids Doctors. And for the postgraduate, uh, uh, the center also uh, having a program that is integrated uh, clinical bioethic and classic program, our classic program. Then also uh, they have a clinical bioethic session for new residents. So every new resident, there is an induction course where a clinical bioethic session is one of the, the content that they have uh, to follow. Then, uh, Within our Magister of Health Professional Education, there are also module developed by a colleague from Center for Bioethics and Medical Humanities is about how to teach uh, bioethics and professionalism. And obviously also doing supervision of a doctoral program as well. Within our faculty, we have what we call as professional behavior committee and uh, the central role of uh, Center of Biomedic uh, and Bioethic and Medical Humanities in this committee is very, very strong. Uh, this committee provides guidelines, educational media, staff development, also routine managing professional behavior misconduct that uh, may be done by our student uh, 
teachers, supporting staff, and also provide a relevant program to uh, revise those uh, misconducts. Obviously, also the center doing uh, great research and also info participate in research ethic committee promoting research ethic as well as doing collaborative research uh, and several focus of uh, discipline. Besides that for services, uh, the center also provide consultation of clinical ethic uh, conducted many years for uh, course, uh, health courses. And uh, we know that the participant is always uh, uh, very enthusiastic uh, year by year from one, one course to another course. Also routine Wednesday meeting and as well as dissemination of biotic for wider public. Obviously there are still many things that's done, but at least this uh, can highlight the area, the main area that the center has worked so hard, contribute uh, greatly to our uh, institution. So uh, we do believe that uh, the aim to accelerate uh, bioethic development uh, under uh, the program, the project of bioethic chair uh, will be achieved with the support from all our partner. And here I try to to see some opportunities, some areas that uh, perhaps uh, could be incorporated within uh, the project of UNESCO chair. So the first is uh, about teaching uh, bioethic, the fundamental, the foundation, and the principal value of bioethic. Uh, we know that in Indonesia there are more than 90 medical school and also another have higher institution that need uh, uh, for this kind of module or topic that should be touched. But uh, we also know that there are limited person that be able to deliver that. Uh, and also geographically, it's not quite, quite easy, but uh, learning from pandemic as well, that online learning can be done. So one of my, uh, one of what I think for the, for the uh, project that perhaps can be incorporated is that uh, forming small team and then uh, try to develop a core module, core module that obligatory, mandatory, must be followed by a medical student, but the delivery can be done more centrally. So for example, not only from one central, but for example, can be divided into six, uh, six regions, like uh, the region of association of a medical, uh, medical faculty institution uh, that have a uh, six region. So for example, the core module is similar, but the delivery can be centrally and can be can be uh, followed by the student uh, through distant learning program. Uh, previously, Mr. Irakli already mentioned so clearly that uh, the core principle and value of bioethic curriculum uh, perhaps similar, but because the application in the different context, it can be adapted, although the values and the principle is still similar. So if this team can decide uh, what kind of material content that must be uh, uh, achieved by all medical students, it will be beneficial for all medical school in Indonesia. And for postgraduate, uh, uh, of course, it can be working with the specialist college and also for uh, continuing medical education, working with ED, Indonesian Medical Association, like what we're going to observe a few minutes later. And then there is also a opportunity in uh, our country so far because the Ministry of uh, Education already declared a policy called Merdeka Belajar Campus Merdeka. Although the health field is exemption for for uh, allowing the student to take uh, until three semester to uh, to take uh, 
the course in different study program or even in different university or even in different uh, country using a various method but we understand that there are space that can be done in uh, medical and health professional education as well so uh, for example the elective module that had been uh, developed by the center uh, earlier also can be offered to wider students, not only for students within uh, faculty of medicine, public health and nursing, or within uh, Universitas Gajah Mada, but even wider uh, to any student in Indonesia or in uh, beyond Indonesia. And there are also some platform that can support, like at faculty, we have Gamel, at university, we have ELO, at national level, the ministry also provide uh, platform like a spada. The other, the other uh, focus that I mentioned uh, within the project of UNESCO chair is empower wider community. Uh, so I would like to share as well that uh, I think during the pandemic there are so many ethical issues that uh, lay people also want to know. And this is opportunity to empower community as well. And uh, we are fortunate because within the faculty led by Dr. Meneni, uh, we develop a TV channel uh, called as Inna Health uh, channel. And within university also having UGN channel. I understand that for Inna Health, for example, until today, uh, it's already have 4 million viewers and 50,000 subscribers. So this is the platform that perhaps also can help the project uh, under uh, UNESCO chair to empower a wider community regarding uh, ethical issue. The last actually already mentioned by uh, Dr. Ajit in previous uh, presentation, uh, I also have several uh, magister students that doing thesis focusing on uh, bioethics, but it's not always easy to find where they have, they want to submit to certain journal, special journal that focus on bioethics because the number I think is still limited, especially in our country. So if under the uh, UNESCO chair, uh, the team also can develop national journal for bioethics, it will be a platform from a dissemination uh, further about uh, bioethics to a more specific uh, communities. Obviously, all those things uh, can be achieved more easily if uh, there is a partnership with local, national, international bioethic net networking communities, as well as strategic partner that today uh, all of them support uh, support the center and also have a long-standing collaboration, fruitful uh, collaboration that uh, uh, also uh, contribute to the stunning accomplishment uh, having granted status as uh, UNESCO chairs for bioethics. I think that's all our, our, my response regarding the inspiring presentation from uh, Professor Yati Sunarto and Dr. Wika uh, for accelerating bioethic development in Indonesia and Asia Pacific region. Again, congratulations. We learn a lot from all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you.